You just moved from a crowded, noisy city into a new home in the country. You love the open space and the fresh air. But now you've found out that the county plans to build a landfill about a mile away from your house. What will happen to all that fresh air? Many people think nothing can be done about bad odors coming from sources like landfills and industries. But I'm happy to tell you that there are solutions to odor problems in your community. Bad odors can often be prevented, contained, or treated so they don't become a nuisance and affect your quality of life. Hi, my name is Maria Jolly and I'm an environmental health researcher working with the CDC and the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, or ATSDR. This is the second in a series of three webcasts explaining how you can get involved in reducing environmental odors in your community. In part one, we explained how to keep an odor diary. In part two, we'll discuss ways to control environmental odors. For most people, environmental odors usually do not result in long-term harmful health effects or illness. However, they can affect your quality of life by adding stress and disrupting normal activity. Let's review some symptoms that can be related to exposure to environmental odors. The most common are headache and nausea. Other symptoms sometimes related to odors include eye, nose and throat irritation, nasal congestion, hoarseness, sore throat and cough, chest tightness and shortness of breath, heart palpitations, drowsiness, and mental depression. Of course, you may not know what is causing these symptoms. For example, nasal congestion may also be related to seasonal allergies, and heart palpitations may be a sign of a more serious problem. As always, when you have questions about your health symptoms, you should see your doctor. We all respond to odors in different ways. Some of us are more sensitive and react strongly to bad odors. Some of us don't. Women, the very young and the very old, are at higher risk of being affected by odors. For more information, watch ATSDR's video on environmental odor sources, exposure symptoms, and sensitive populations. An overview for community members. Now let's look at some ways to control environmental odors. Of course, the best way to control odors is to prevent them. For example, Industries can design and use processes that are odor-free, but developing these solutions is expensive and may be years away. Another, perhaps more practical way to prevent odors is for local governments to pass laws or ordinances restricting the operation of industries that produce odors. Sometimes, environmental odors are worse at certain times of day or night. Here, odor diaries can come in handy because residents will have a record of the times when environmental odors are worse. Then local governments can use existing nuisance laws to reduce odors by requiring facilities to manage environmental odors. Odor diaries can also help authorities find out where odors are worse and use laws or ordinances to limit odor sources in these locations. Zoning restrictions can regulate the locations of new landfills, new industries, or industrial upgrades that can increase bad environmental odors. Now let's talk about some of the methods that can be used to alleviate bad environmental odors in a community. Sometimes, industries can use filtering techniques to block the odors they produce. For example, they can plant trees or build structural barriers to keep odors from reaching a community. Some industries can change manufacturing processes to prevent odors, or they can use odor control technologies to disperse, capture, or destroy odors. Dispersion scatters odors by directing odor-causing material from the source into a high stack. These odors are then mixed with air above a nearby community. When the mixture is released, the odor is scattered or diluted before reaching the ground. Incineration, or burning, is another widely available and effective technology. It uses very high temperatures to convert bad-smelling gases to odorless gases before releasing them. Absorption, with a B, or wet scrubbing, dissolves odor-causing materials in a liquid, usually near the point of discharge, for example, through a stack. Adsorption, with a D, or dry scrubbing, 
passes a stream of gas through a solid material like activated carbon, which is a type of charcoal. The material captures and removes the odor-producing gas molecules from the air. Biofilters and chemical filtration are control technologies that work by running a stream of gas through a large bed of soil, compost, or peat. Depending on the contaminant, the microorganisms living in these materials can destroy the odorant. Odor control technologies are even available for larger odor sources like landfills and open manure storage lagoons. A floating permeable cover, or biofilter, can control the odors that are caused by microbes. All right, that was a lot of information, so let's review. Preventing odors is more effective than controlling them. New industrial processes and local ordinances, such as zoning restrictions, can help prevent or reduce environmental odors. Physical controls, like trees and barriers, can sometimes keep odors from reaching residents. Finally, industries can use technologies to capture and destroy odors before they are released into the environment. In part three of the series, we will explain how to reduce your own exposure to environmental odors, how to work with government and industry, and how to request environmental odor health education for doctors and healthcare workers in your community. Please visit the CDC ATSDR website on environmental odors for more information. Thank you.